Hello there. So, HBO Max is putting out a movie called Unpregnant. It doesn't look all that great to me, honestly. But conservative commentator, whom is probably a fascist, John Doyle is attacking it because he perceives it to be baby-killing propaganda. So what if it is? Art is propaganda. Anyway, Doyle is deconstructing the trailer for Unpregnant, while also spouting pro-life rhetoric. So I guess that I'm here to deconstruct his propaganda and argue against it. This is probably going to be painful, because the man tends to ramble and just talk about his feelings. His videos are generally terrible. Let's get started. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. It's been a while since we talked about abortion, so this will be a good one. I've actually, I've been called radically pro-life before, which just means that it's very difficult to present me with circumstances which I would believe justify the killing of innocent life, but the trailer for this movie actually came out a few days ago, and when I first saw it, I was very surprised, but at the same time, I was not surprised at all. Hi, this is, uh, yeah, I was just filming my double review, this is what I look like, um, I decided to just pop in because... You know, since John Doyle makes so many known points all at once and he just tends to ramble, I figured I'd just, you know, let him have his ramble and wait until he'd watch more of the trailer to respond and, you know, address all of his points at once. So, yeah. See ya. Because, you know, you, you watch it and you think, wow, I can't believe that they would present a a teenage mother getting an abortion without telling her parents is just a fun road trip comedy that's disgusting, that's depraved. But then you look outside and you remember that we're going to hell in a handcart. So in a way, it makes perfect sense. But speaking of things that make perfect sense, why do you think that the left champions abortion so much? Why do you think that they celebrate it so much? Why are there parades for it? Why do they dedicate ceremonies and clothing to it? Why do they evangelically praise it? It and remind you of the abortions that they've had trying to convince you and perhaps even themselves that it was okay and that it was the right thing to do. Well, the reason is that abortion is the crown jewel of their religion. It is the ultimate state of liberal philosophy. It is the logical conclusion of liberal philosophy. It means that they are so liberated and so autonomous. That I can't speak for leftists, but I am pro-choice because I do not think that a woman should have to be forced to have a child until she is ready, and I don't think that there should be any laws regulating what a woman can and can't do with her body, especially if those laws come from a millennia-old religious dogma. So they can literally murder another human being if its life is inconvenient to them. It means that they get to play God. And perhaps you don't believe that abortion is murder, so we'll get to that a little bit later. But if you think about what differentiates the left from the right, uh, it can most simply be articulated as the belief in hierarchy versus the belief in total equality. And a lot of people have this take of, well, the left and right paradigm is false. It's not real. Both sides are the same. Kind of cringe. Also, just not, not true. Like, politicians lying doesn't invalidate the historical and philosophical nature of the right and the left. And that categorization dates back to the aftermath of the French Revolution, where Fuck hierarchy. Well, fuck unjust hierarchy. And fuck anything that perpetuates that hierarchy. Fuck capitalism. Fuck patriarchy. And as for that meme, uh, it's not so cringe. To paint the Democrats and the Republicans with the exact same brush isn't exactly fair, but... Both parties are corporatists, both parties give tax breaks to billionaires, and both parties have been bombing brown people. 
The only real offense that I take to that meme is that it misquotes Vic Sanchez. Where those who believed in total equality sat on the left and those who believed in hierarchy sat on the right. And so liberalism's belief <sighs> in total equality, <sighs> the idea that we're all born the same, <sighs> has led to the belief that <sighs> man ought to be liberated even from the constraints and unfairness of nature. That nature, which produces hierarchy, also known as inequality, as well as human life. So to be truly liberated means to even be liberated from nature, which means that the state must enforce equality, since if left alone, inequality will result, and also to be liberated from the natural consequence of sex, which is pregnancy. And so, as we can see, the results of this have been things like abortion and state-enforced equality of outcome. So it's all connected, and that's why abortion is so important to them. The most fundamental characteristic of a human being and of nature in general, the ability to reproduce, has been conquered by liberalism through abstract rationalizations. There will never be a greater accomplishment for liberalism, since nothing takes precedence over the value of human life Unless they can manage to, like, scientifically clone people or to actualize asexual reproduction. But only then will something even begin to rival the magnitude of abortion as the quintessential accomplishment of liberalism. The complete disregard of the other over whom one has a host of moral and perhaps even biological obligations in pursuit of the divine self. Uh, see what I mean? He just doesn't stop talking. He's like Ben Shapiro. He talks as much and makes as many points as possible so that one doesn't know where to begin. But I'll try. First, his abridgment of the French Revolution isn't exactly true. Those that sat on the left wanted to establish a liberal democracy, and those that sat on the right wanted to re-establish the monarchy. So, you're against abortion because it goes against nature? What kind of essentialist nonsense is that? Just because it's natural doesn't mean that it's desirable. If you were diagnosed with cancer, would you just accept it? No, you would seek treatment. Are you also against birth control? That's meant to give us the pleasure of sex without removing the risk of pregnancy. It's abhorrent. But anyways, we'll watch the trailer, we'll go over that, and then we'll talk about why this movie is so terrible and harmful, and also why abortion in general is so terrible and harmful, along with what all of this means for our country. Fine, you're fine. You always use a condom, so you're fine. Hey, dude. <laughs> I've got this thing. If a young woman needs a procedure, is that possible? Where's the closest facility? There's an Albuquerque in Missouri. The law won't let me get one without my parents knowing. Some important context for this movie, by the way, is that the reason she needs to get this abortion, the reason that she needs to kill this child, is because according to the descriptions of the film, having this child would squander her Ivy League college dreams. And this is not unlike when we saw Michelle Williams praise abortion at the Golden Globes and say that if it weren't for her abortion, she never would have been able to receive that award. Perhaps this is operating on a different scale, but the premise remains the same, which is that the life of a human being is second to my desires, that not only is it permissible, but it's actually good to sacrifice human life at the altar of fame, fortune, or status. It's evil. More specifically, it's satanic, but I'm sure we'll get into that later. I'd be surprised if, if we could avoid it. Might have to go preacher mode. We'll see. But this whole leftist narrative of, oh, well, motherhood? Serving your family? That's not empowering for women. You know what is empowering for women? Serving an employer. Not getting married and having kids, but working 50 hours a week, entering numbers into a spreadsheet, or writing legal briefs. That's what it really means to be a woman. And as it would turn out, as we've experienced a few decades of that supposed female empowerment, women are experiencing record levels of depression. They are more depressed than men, they're becoming more depressed relative to men, and they're more depressed than their mothers and their grandmothers at the same stages of their lives. This is referred to as the paradox of declining female happiness. And so for Hollywood to come in and communicate to young girls, hey, it's totally normal for you to be sexually active in high school. <laughs> Saving yourself for marriage, that's outdated. People back then weren't as smart as we are now. I mean, you know, they still thought that only women could 
could give birth, but we're smarter now. And also, if you happen to get pregnant doing that thing that is designed to get you pregnant, just kill the kid. You got to go be a number at a university. And then you got to go be a number at some company. Don't settle down. Don't have a family. That's not what you want. You want to do what the men do because the best way to empower women is to rape them of their feminine identity and then tell them that femininity is oppressive and they have to strive to be just like men. And the only people who actually get to proudly embody womanhood are delusional men. That's what our daughters are learning. Our daughters are taught that the defining characteristic of their identity as a woman is not their ability to create life, but rather their choice, their rights to kill that life if it's inconvenient to them. It's disgusting. Let's empower women by rejecting the fundamental characteristics of womanhood. That's why the pioneering feminists didn't want women to even have a choice. Simone de Beauvoir told Betty Friedan that if women were allowed to make the choice for themselves, then too many would want to stay home and raise children. And so the only way for them to achieve the goals of their narrative was to indoctrinate generations of women into this completely artificial perversion of what it means to be a woman and what it means to be a mother. I mean, the movie is literally called Unpregnant. What does that even mean? That's not a real concept. That's a euphemism. Typically, you'd expect that to mean like, oh, she gave birth to the child. But no, in this case, it would mean that she killed it. And they're not even taking the extreme approach, right? Like they're not even taking the, oh, well, you know, the mother's health was, no. They're just saying, well, you know, she wants to go to college, so she should be able to kill it. And these types of reasons make up the vast, vast, vast majority of reasons for women getting abortions, by the way, which is why you can never compromise with these people on anything because they will never stop. And I also like how this is where we're at now with teenage movies like this is what the coming of age stories are now and they're only going to get worse from here and you can trace the evolution like dude let's throw a party while mom and dad are gone dude let's drink beer we don't have to tell our parents hey let's sneak out saturday night so we can go make out in a car with bench seating and now it's like hey i'm pregnant i want to kill the child let's go on a road trip i was like when she's waiting for the test results she's telling herself like oh i can't be pregnant because i always use a condom which is really just sad because you've got this girl who's sexually active in high school, and through habitual participation of the act designed to create human life, she manages to create a human life. And because she was irresponsible, because she wasn't ready to be a mother yet, now that life, which she is responsible for creating, has to die. But it's okay, because she's going to go get a degree, probably in something useless. And, uh, you know, she got to secrete some dopamine and oxytocin along the way. Was it worth it, Mommy? Uh, I should really be counting the minutes in his stupid vans. First, so what if she wants to abort because she wants to continue her education? Does she deserve to have a life ruined just because a condom broke? Also, it's very nice of you to mock the possibility of her getting a sociology degree. First, you don't know what she's going to be studying... But, you know, just for the argument, I do have a webpage open about what, showing what jobs someone can get with a sociology degree. This is from the Bounce Careers. Anyway, a sociology degree gets you a career as a guidance counsellor, a human resources representative, a lawyer, a media planner, a market research analyst, and a management consultant. Uh, those sound like pretty good jobs that you can get for the sociology degree. Maybe conservatives should stop mocking a, socio a sociology degree. Amusing the kind of information that you can find with just a simple Google search. Next. Did you really make the consent to sex is consent to pregnancy argument? Is driving a car consent to a car crash? And what if there was no consent to sex? If you're a fan of Doyle watching this and finding it unfair of me to bring up rape, well, he said that he was radically pro-life. I see that as reasonable grounds to assume that he'd be anti-abortion in that scenario as well. And why are you calling it a child? She's very obviously in the early stages of pregnancy. What she is pregnant with is... Not even remotely human. Also, hell Satan. And, look, if a woman wants to be a mother and take care of her children, that's fine. She can do that, if she wants. But if she doesn't want to do that and wants to be a working woman instead, that should be seen as just as okay. She shouldn't be seen as incomplete or pitiable. It should be her choice. And what is wrong with doing what the men do? 
Women were doing the same thing as men were doing in the 1940s while the men were out fighting and dying in a stupid war. Fellow YouTube Cheyenne Lin said something along the lines of Rosie the Riveter did her man's job for him while he was away, but now that he's back, he wants him in the kitchen. And what you said about the earliest feminists saying that women should not be allowed to choose whether or not to be mothers, well, I'm, I'm saying they should have the choice to do that. I'm not saying... I'm not advocating for taking away anyone's choice. I just said if a woman... I just said that if a woman wants to be a mother, that's great. If she wants to be a working woman instead, that is also great. You're the one that has a problem with one of the scenarios, John Doyle. And everyone is less happy than they've ever been. People are working more hours for less money and have less time to find meaningful relationships. There is no one way to empower women. The only way to do that is to remove cultural stigma over a woman choosing not to become a mother or get married. No one is trying to take femininity away from women, but a woman needn't be judged or defined by her femininity. And I know that he also did a transphobia, but that's a whole other issue, so for now, I'll just say that trans people are not delusional. They don't look down at the pubic region and see that instead of this. And what kind of stupid picture is that? Babies can't talk. Especially not dead babies. I know we're not close anymore. True. And I'm the last person that you want to help. Accurate. But I need your help and I don't have anywhere else to go. Go where? To get the thing, the, the procedure. So you're hiding this from your man, your best friend. Hey girl. And your Jesus freak parents. And you thought, why not ask Bailey Butler to drive me hundreds of miles? Because she probably doesn't have anything to do anyway. Kind of, yes. Bailey, Bailey, come on. I'm just messing with you. You're right, I do not have anything going on. I thought you drove a Camry. Woo! Road trip! Road trip! Abortion is much less of a traumatic event, much more of a road trip. Teen pregnancy is quirky. Killing babies is quirky. This is definitely not a cope. It's not like when people celebrate their abortions, they have to assure us that they don't regret it, that it was the best decision that they ever made. Yeah, yeah, okay. Which one of us are you trying to convince, me or you? Celebrating abortion is a cope. Women are much more likely to develop anxiety disorders, depression, uh, substance abuse problems, or to commit suicide after they've had an abortion. And the left's answer to this is because... Everything ever has been socially constructed. It's because people like you make them feel bad about it, which again is a cope. And I also like how this is the problem in the film. The central conflict is not that the girl is pregnant. It's not that she's inheriting this responsibility. The problem is, oh, I'm definitely going to kill it. It's just going to be kind of tricky because I can't let my parents find out about it because, you know, they would stop me. And that's inconvenient to what I want, which, of course, just reinforces the eternal antagonist as the parents and their Christian moral code. Remember, the girl referred to the parents as Jesus freak parents. Using Jesus freak or anything adjacent as a pejorative uh, is the biggest rhetorical cope in the history of the English language. What does it mean to be a Jesus freak? Like, bro, you're so pious. Ha <laughs> ha. Bro, I bet the only thing you kneel for is Christ and not literally any minority who asks you to. What an idiot. Bro, I bet you keep a pure mind and don't even watch cartoon animals have sex. What a loser. It's such a cope. And I'm not saying all atheists are like that, but the people who are like that, these very disgusting, hedonistic, degenerate people, the people who would use Jesus Freak as an insult, they're all atheists. And we can talk about the difference between policies all day long, but really what it comes down to is the original and eternal conflict between good and evil. This is not Republicans versus Democrats or conservatives versus liberals. This is good versus evil. And we'll get more in depth with that in a second, but that's the most important thing to be thinking about when looking at things like this. Because, it, you know, you look outside the state of the country, the state of the world, once you accept that, everything else just makes sense. And of course, I would never go as far as to say something like, the movie is satanic. Uh, however, if Satanists were producing content, you know, this is about exactly what it would look like you know not hey girl i need your help raising this child elder with completing the pregnancy and putting it up for adoption which would be so easy since there are huge waiting lists for newborn babies at any given time hi me again um i just thought i'd also add something you know that's you know kind of prevalent among pro-lifers is that you know once the the child is born 
they do not care about what happens to it. They don't care about the child like getting a proper education or having like you know access to healthcare or or you know like any like social security because uh you know poor lifers are also you know they're predominantly like very conservative and you know they they think that welfare and and, and taxes are like you know like the worst thing ever so not only do they not want the uh you know the 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 mother to have an abortion they don't even want to they don't even want her or her child to get any support after the baby is born like the, the, they don't want the baby to get access to medicare they don't want the baby to like be assured like a good education or or food like that's just insane no, we're actually just gonna go kill it, and I'm not gonna t tell my parents because I don't need them reminding me that what, what I'm doing is selfish and wrong. Yes. You honestly don't believe that a woman can't regret her abortion? And I know what you were going on about there. You were talking about post-abortion syndrome. That pseudoscience. There is no solid evidence that post-abortion syndrome is a real thing. And negative reinforcement is what does lead women to regret and do self-destructive things following an abortion. Also, don't fairy shame. Fairies aren't hurting anyone. And children in foster care suffer high rates of abuse, depression, and neglect. Why doesn't that trouble you? Plus, he said in his political compass test that gay couples shouldn't be able to adopt if straight couples will miss out on a kid, even though all of the evidence shows that kids raised by same-sex couples are not at any disadvantage. Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico. We'll be in Albuquerque by tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. No. And we'll be home Sunday evening. I'm setting the alarm for self-care huh i had to post something so people wouldn't bother me of course and so people wouldn't know you're with me we both know you wouldn't do the same for me you made it really hard to be your friend i'm sorry that i couldn't be perfect for I you never all the time i needed you to be perfect i appreciate everything you've done for me you crazy idiot that is so goddamn nice let's go now we've got this arc, which is just incredible, and it's that the film is going to emphasize more on the relationship between these two girls than on the relationship between the mother and her child. They're going to make this relationship appear to be more significant and more emotional than the relationship between the mother and her child. And the reason for that is that they don't want to acknowledge a relationship. It doesn't exist. It's not a child. It's not even a life. It's just a clump of cells. The real focus here is on the fact that the one girl hasn't always been so nice to the other girl, but now the you of course that's the relationship that will be focused on. She has a character, a personality, and a performance. There's a relationship with the main protagonist that can be developed and explored. There is no cinematic relationship that can be developed between her and her in utero embryo because it can't have a character. An embryo has no personality and at this stage in the pregnancy, it would be a clump of cells. I don't even care about his anti-abortion bullshit at this point. I'm just angry at his non-understanding of characterization. And that's why he should end this rant and move on with the trailer, but... No, he's just going to keep talking. Fuck me. Uniting together to kill a kid because girl power and abortion is actually a very simple issue like it gets overcomplicated because both sides have very vested interests in the outcomes and so we get into these complex philosophical and bioethical discussions but then we also get into these less intelligent you know no uterus no opinion type discussions but when you clear all the smoke away it just boils down to if that is a human life then you can't kill it and the problem with that is that it's fairly easy to prove that what occupies these wombs are human beings and that they are alive and so that presupposes that human life has value 
value, which is actually not something that the right and left agree upon anymore, which is why from there, the left will get into arguments like, well, it's not enough to be a human being. It has to have personhood as defined by whichever arbitrary metric is most convenient at the time, be it sentience, viability, etc. Or, well, that doesn't matter because we have bodily autonomy, which means that we can do what we want regardless. My body, my choice. And so again, the conflict is much less right versus left, uh, pro-life versus pro-choice. It really just comes down to whether you believe that human life has unique value. Do you really think these women that march in Washington screaming at the top of their lungs about how it's their right to abort their children if they want to go get a sociology degree, do you really think that the problem there is that they just don't recognize that they're killing innocent human life? Life? No. The problem is that they don't value innocent human life, especially if it interferes with or inconveniences their subjective desires. That's why the old arguments don't really work anymore. I mean, we used to be able to say things like, hey, you know, uh, have you at least considered that if you're wrong, it would mean that you're advocating for the murder of children? Because now that's not even effective anymore because it assumes that they'd agree that we're wrong, even if the mainstream narrative did support it and it inconveniences is their lifestyle. It gets back to whether we even agree that innocent human life has unique value. And again, that's just a conflict between good and evil. Why are they looking at the car? I see my mom's boyfriend. But does that human life hold priority over the woman's bodily autonomy? Because I don't think so. Pregnancy is very physically taxing and painful for the mother. Nobody should be forced to go through that. Also, it's interesting that you're talking about the value of life when you are a pro-death penalty dipshit. Not to mention the 4% of people on death row who are innocent. I don't even know what else to say. Good versus evil, right versus wrong. Is this anime... This isn't how you form a good discussion. It's just making vague allusions to what's right and wrong. There's nothing to argue against because right and wrong are artificial constructs. Morality is subjective. What's right and wrong now is different from what was considered right and wrong a hundred years ago. Just a few decades ago, being gay was something that got you beaten to death. A few hundred years ago, it was normal to own human beings. You can't make an argument around something as basic as right and wrong because morality is subject to change. And just to reiterate, a sociology degree can get you employment as a lawyer. So don't mock sociology degrees. You're full of crap. We're driving a stolen car. Hello? If you don't help us out, we're going to be in so much trouble. I don't think that this is what you really want. It's my life. It's my choice. Grab on! Hold tight! Grab on me! Yeah! Yeah! Trees go fast. Politics aside, my most accurate take about this film is that it's not going to be funny. And it's going to be for the same reason that it's very difficult for women to be funny in general, because there are approved strains of female comedy. Female comedy is always about rejecting the perceived standards of morality and feminine behavior. It's not created, nor is it viewed to make the intended audience feel good in an amusing way or in a funny way, but rather to energize them through communicating to them that these women are rejecting those oppressive patriarchal standards and they're having fun while doing it. Look, they're on a roller coaster while pregnant. Pregnant? What? These wild and crazy girls aren't supposed to do that. That's why, generally speaking, female comedy is always like, I eat lots of food. I'm messy. I have sex with lots of men. I get pregnant and murder the children for sport, etc. And male comedy is generally, you know, actually funny. And, of course, there are exceptions to this. But the problem is that because those exceptions don't fit the approved narrative, they don't find as much mainstream success. But it's also interesting how the title cards mention that can you please stop slut shaming John Doyle? I'm starting to get the impression that you were a virgin throughout high school and you're probably still a virgin now. Not not that there's anything wrong with being a virgin. I was a virgin throughout high school as well. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 21. How old are you now? Doesn't matter. I'm not here to virgin shame you. Just... Just don't 
don't, don't slut shame women that do decide to have lots of sex with, I don't know, I guess lots of different people, I, because this is a contrapoint observation where, you know, she observed it's not really about the amount of sex somebody or rather the amount of sex a woman has, but, you know, how many different sexual partners a woman has. You know, like, having sex with 50 different men will, like, make your vagina rough on the inside, but having sex with the same men 50 times doesn't. Strange. Uh, but aside from that, these are just his feelings. His unsubstantiated opinions. Like, he was just talking about female comedians versus male comedians. Aren't you going to point to any examples? Of course not. You don't even provide sources. Her life got off track and, and now she must forge her own path. And that's actually really deep when you think about it. Like, I wonder if the person who wrote that is pro-life. Maybe they're a fan of the show because what that's saying is like, okay, you were perhaps behaving recklessly. You weren't ready to be a mother, but you were still actively having sex with men who you presumably wouldn't want to father your children. This wasn't supposed to happen, but guess what? It did happen. And and now you have a choice to make. You have to forge your destiny. You have to forge your own path. Are you going to take responsibility for your actions or are you going to run from them? Are you going to allow this child to live his or her life or are you going to take that from them because you're a coward and because you're selfish? And this girl even said... He's not even saying anything. That tagline isn't pro-life. In the context of this trailer, it seems to be pro-choice as the main character made a mistake and is choosing to terminate the pregnancy, or abort the embryo, or, and I can be as graphic as you want, MURDER THE FUCKING CHILD to live the life that she wants. A pro-life narrative would be her getting pregnant, taking it to term, and giving everything she hoped for and planned for up and accepting her fate. And what if the child grows up to be non-binary? Oh, wait, then they'd be delusional. Says to the guy who I think is actually the father of the child, well, it's my life and it's my choice. And we first have to ask her to check her privilege because isn't she fortunate? Isn't she fortunate to have the power in the situation? Do you think she'd feel the same way if she were in the position of the child? If she was in the child's position, she wouldn't have an opinion. She wouldn't even have a brain. Your equivalency is false. There's a great Reagan quote, um, which is, I've noticed that everyone who is pro-choice has already been born. And that's absolutely true. These are people who have been born. Their parents have made sacrifices to give them life, and they are unwilling to carry the torch for their own selfish reasons. So no, it's not actually your life, and it's not actually your choice, because you don't just get to do whatever you want simply by virtue of your being alive, and simply by virtue of your ability to do whatever you want, hypothetically. Like, what an unfortunate reality this is what an unfortunate time we live in where people construct their livelihoods convincing young women that not only is motherhood unimportant it's actually undesirable and they make money doing it and we all become more miserable as a result as our country deteriorates in front of us as the greatest civilization in the history of the world slowly dies as we have failed to carry the torch passed down by our ancestors because we're selfish and because we thought that we could ignore conventional wisdom. We thought that we could elevate evil and remain good. Okay, for the record, none of what I'm about to say is necessarily to make an argument against abortion. I'm more than capable of arguing against abortion in a completely secular framework as I have done many times on this channel before, but I'm doing it. I'm going big time preacher mode now, so click away if you're not ready for this information yet. And if you stick around, you don't get to complain about, well, he's forcing his beliefs on us. Yeah, that's what I do, but you're okay with it when when it's about gun control, when it's about climate change, but when it's about, I don't know, the truth of our existence, which requires you to be a good person, well, then you don't want to hear it. That's what you consider to be a great quote? That's stupid. Have you ever eaten a hamburger, Jonathan? 
I can't help but notice that everyone who eats meat isn't livestock. You seem to have left your best secular arguments at the door because you haven't been making any good secular anti-abortion arguments. So yeah, this makes me feel even more comfortable labeling Jonathan as a fascist. He just said that he forces his beliefs on you, and, oh no, is he a climate change denier? That sucks. He's even more stupid than I thought. But that's okay. I'm not really speaking to those people anyways. I'm speaking to those who recognize that we have incessantly dismissed the conflict between good and evil as merely a difference of opinion. And we have allowed ourselves to be seduced by those acting on behalf of evil when they tell us that this wonderful and benevolent country of ours was actually founded so that everything could be free to propagate, whether that be good or evil. And if we try to stop it, well, you're just enforcing your morality on me, and that's anti-American. And, you know, ignoring for now that the Founding Fathers would actually disagree with that if you read their actual writings and not just out-of-context quotes that go viral on Facebook, we have given the heart of our country to evil forces, and we are seeing the results of their work every day. And you and I really didn't have a say in it. And that makes us really angry. But you know who it makes even angrier? Him. It makes him angrier. It's the same conflict as always. I mean, good and evil. It's impossible to talk about that conflict without talking about the big man, right? Because we've taken everything that is good and righteous and pure and beautiful, and we have mocked it. We have instead elevated everything that is evil and disgusting to the core of our society. Our culture has become an abomination. Abortion, materialism, greed, hedonism, gluttony, lust, convenience, endless entertainment. All of that has distracted us from the most important truth of all, which is that God will not be mocked. And you can roll your eyes, you can keep your pride, keep recycling to yourself the same tired George Carlin monologue or or your favorite excerpt from the Richard Dawkins book, which you only read half of. None of that will matter because you will bow and you will confess just like everyone else. And you will be humbled to learn that a life dedicated to the worship of the self does not make you more than the dust at his feet. And so when you're scratching your head, trying to piece all this together, you're thinking, well, now why would people do this? What's the goal here. It would seem that the belief that God would refuse to end all that is beautiful through his creation if there were good people who may die. And so those who have been corrupted by satanic forces are working to ensure that there are no good people left anymore. So he ends all creation because since Satan is not nearly strong enough to corrupt or destroy God, he has to force God to destroy his own creation by corrupting it entirely, which is us and all that was once good and beautiful. And if you think this sounds crazy, like I used to until a couple of years ago, you should just look outside. You should read more. There is no other explanation, and I refuse to withhold this information because some people might get mad and not stick around for the next time I talk about why socialism equals bad, because this is the root of our conflict and fundamentally the root of all conflict. And only when you understand that can you begin to make sense of what's really going on in our world. Who cares about what the Founding Father said? There were slave owners that lived over 250 years ago. And what am I supposed to say in response to God? He brings up God as a trump card. God is an intangible concept. I can't argue against that because there's no substance. There's nothing there. There's no critical thinking here, just religious dogma. He just talks about the wrath of God while probably getting a boner at the thought of all the gay and trans people burning in hell. Also, I don't get that last part. If God is all-knowing and all-powerful and if Satan wanted to and succeeded in corrupting mankind, wouldn't that have to be part of God's plan and he wanted that to happen? Well, this video sucked. Sucked so hard. And not in the good way. I hated watching it, I hated reacting to it. Jonathan doesn't say anything substantive, he just talks. At least with Hunter Avalon, he'd say several things of substance, things that I could argue against, things that required research and sources. John Doyle is just terrible. And congratulations on Hunter Avalon for getting much better, But I suspect that Jonathan will only get worse.